Now that we have a shaped structure that we're happy with, let's apply some load cases and run the analysis. So to do that, I'm going to come over to the loading environment, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on coefficients. This is now the window where you're going to do most of your work in applying load cases. In other videos, I'll demonstrate how to apply advanced load cases where you can apply and modify the coefficients however you like across your entire structure. But for this model, I'm going to apply three or four load cases where I allow NDN to apply my coefficients for me automatically. Now, NDN does not have many rules that you have to follow, but one of them is that load case number one has to be pre-stress and dead load. So to set load case number one, I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to click my up arrow to get to load case number one. And then all I have to do to set that as pre-stress and dead load is come down here to the bottom and click on pre-stress. As soon as I do, right down here, it will tell you that load case one has been assigned to pre-stress and dead load. And it will also show you up at the top that the name of the load case has been filled in as pre-stress and DL. Now we can click up, create a second load case, and start applying the custom loads to this structure. For load case number two, I'm going to assign a wind load, and I'm going to set that as a uniform uplift, and I'll assign that to be 10 pounds per square foot. So I have my wind load checked. I'll come down here and I'll apply 10 pounds per square foot is my value. And then to assign that as a uniform uplift, all I need to do is come down here to the bottom and click uniform. As soon as I do, NDN applies the coefficients as negative one, that means it's an uplift, and I have load case number two set. We jump to load case number three, and now I'm gonna apply a wind blowing in a certain direction. Uh, my value for my wind, let's increase that. This time, let's make it 14 pounds per square foot, and now I'm gonna blow the wind in the positive X direction. So now to apply this to the structure, I'm going to read in some coefficient files. To select which file I want, I can just click on Browse, and it will take me to the library of all of my various load coefficient files. So for example, we have some snow cases, some wind load cases. I'm just going to select the generic wind load case, but you can also see that we have all of these ASCE wind codes already set. So I'm going to go wind coefficient, open that, and then to apply those wind coefficients to my structure, all I need to do is click Generate. NDN will automatically apply the appropriate load coefficients based on the geometry of my structure. And here are the coefficients it is applying up in the upper left-hand corner. So now I'll do a load case four. I'll keep everything the same, except instead of blowing the wind in the positive X direction, now I will blow it in the positive Y direction keep my same load coefficient file, click generate. There's my new wind in the positive Y direction. Now, if we go to load case five, let's create a snow load. For this, I'm gonna change my load from wind to live load slash snow load. I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna remove my wind load and I'm gonna apply a snow load to this structure of, let's go with 15 pounds per square foot. Now, for this, I'm just going to apply a uniform snow load across the entire structure. So to generate that, all I need to do is come down and click uniform, similar to what I did for the wind uplift. So I'll click on uniform. And because I'm in live load slash snow load, it's now applied that uniform load acting downward. So I know that this is correct. I think that's, that's all the load cases I need to apply for right now. So I'm going to click finish. And you can see right down here at the bottom, I get a quick summary of the title of each of my load cases. And if you want, you can click back through each of them real quick to see that they're there. Make sure you're happy with them. We get back to load case one. It looks blank because it's for pre-stress and dead load. So we can now analyze, run these load cases, and look at the results.